I V M. Hello and welcome back with yet another episode of Heal and Hardy, your show on health that helps you reduce your risk of diseases and lead the best life you can. I am your host and health coach, Rachna Chachi, not Chachi, cancer nutrition coach and nutritional therapist. And today I am going to talk to you about my past, present, and future, because we are going to talk about autoimmune diseases. It's something that I suffered from, as you all already know. I was bedridden and have deformities because 13 years ago I had rheumatoid arthritis, which changed the course of my past, present, and future. An autoimmune disease is a condition in which your immune system mistakenly attacks your body. We know that our immune system normally guards against germs like bacteria and viruses. When it senses these foreign invaders, it sends out an army of fighter cells to attack them. Under normal healthy circumstances, our immune system can tell the difference between foreign cells and our own cells. But in an autoimmune condition, the immune system mistakes part of our body, like our joints, which happened in my case in rheumatoid arthritis, or skin. which happens in psoriasis as foreign it releases proteins called autoantibodies that attack healthy cells some autoimmune diseases target only one organ type 1 diabetes damages the pancreas hashimotos targets the thyroid other diseases like systemic lupus affect the entire body and digestive system so why does the immune system attack the body doctors don't know and hence there is no cure To someone who hasn't had an autoimmune condition, there is a very simple way of describing these. You know the times when electricity in the house goes off. If it goes for half an hour, you're not stressed, but then the darkness prolongs. There is no one to talk to. Your phone is depleting its battery. The water motor cannot be switched on because it runs on electricity. Your laptop battery has already died out, and you can't charge it. You can't listen to the radio or TV, so you just sit there in the darkness, fearing a night of loneliness without a hot bath. It's getting cold out there, and you can't switch on the heater. Or it's extremely hot out there, and you can't switch on the air conditioner. That night of no electricity slowly becomes a few days, and then a few weeks. Everything around you is dysfunctional now. What will you do? Where will you start? How do you switch on the electricity? How do you get your life back? For a patient suffering from an autoimmune condition, this is what happens inside the body, and doctors do not have that light switch. Multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis. There are eighty plus such conditions, along with your body, joints, organs. your emotional state becomes pessimistic depressive hopeless when i had rheumatoid arthritis in 2006 my darkness pushed me to find the solutions to nourish myself and crawl up to find that switch after i found my switch i'm helping others find theirs and in this episode we have the wonderfully knowledgeable dr taruna madan scientist and immunologist who will help us understand why it is so difficult to find that switch Dr Taruna will not only give us her perspective on autoimmune conditions as an immunologist but also as a spouse of Dr Sanjeev Gupta who is actually living with an autoimmune condition we will also capture the journey of a brave psoriatic arthritis patient who refused to take methotrexate or any other drugs and 3 years later is leading a wonderful quality of life how did she do that let us meet Dr Taruna and autoimmune warrior Palak Phalla Ahuja on the other side of the break don't go anywhere help us find their switch in just a minute how many times have you motivated yourself to improve your sleep or lose weight or be more productive how many times have you failed hi my name is ashtin doctor tune into my show the habit coach podcast where we focus on creating small tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big impossible tasks So make listening to me a habit every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or on your favorite podcasting app. 
Thank you so much. I hope you've got your green teas. I'm sipping on mine and in the studio with me is Dr. Taruna Madan. She's a scientist, immunologist. She is in the Department of Immunity in the National Institute for Research and Reproductive Health, which is ICMR Mumbai, and she is a PhD and postdoctorate. Thank you, Dr. Taruna, for joining us. Thank you, Rachna. Thank you. Your work in uh, the areas of uh, immunology have been celebrated and understood and really, really appreciated across. You're also on Wikipedia, I hear. Yeah. Yes, we do have that as you know part of our profession, but uh, definitely it's an opportunity to be here to talk to you, and through you reach. Uh, um, lot of people who want to understand what autoimmune diseases are no so thank you so much we needed an insight of somebody as learned as you are so my first question is very deep you know deep diving into this is you know why why do we get you know i am an ex autoimmune patient you know that there are so many of us struggling why are we getting this these diseases so much now yes the science also looked at this why question in a very deep manner and what we understand about our immune system is they are our soldiers so immune system is to protect us and when immune system itself is you know going berserk then we have autoimmune diseases mm. and if immune system is silent we go on to the other spectrum of the diseases that is cancer so autoimmune diseases generate because if i say to be uh, you know in a layman's language it is like molecular mimicry so the immune system knows how to distinguish between self and non self so self is us and non self is any foreign body including allergens including pathogens bacteria virus fungi and including the transplants that we get from other individuals so all this is you know part of foreign for us and our immune system is trained in the thymus gland to identify to distinguish between self and non self and whenever we have acute infections it identifies something as foreign and then it dies down after the invader has been succumbed but what happens in autoimmune diseases is that some of the molecules to which our, uh, immune system identifies them as foreign are very similar to our own host molecules okay. and that's how when the mistake happens that what is self and what is non self it forgets you know it's very interesting you just brought out uh, cancer in the same breath as you brought out uh, autoimmune conditions there is a lot of similarity that is now coming out between the two and uh, to a large extent in medical science the res the, the treatment uh, is similar i mean both have chemotherapy drugs immunosuppressants as part of it and uh, the thymus gland that you talked about um we've seen in cases uh, with ivf uh, it can trigger cancer or it can trigger an autoimmune condition in repro reproductive health you know since you are in that uh, have you seen that the incidence of uh, autoimmune conditions and cancer in women is higher because of the hormones which are there definitely definitely reproductive hormones play a big role in uh, you know uh, controlling these autoimmune diseases to a certain extent and when the hormone cover goes off you know because uh, or altered when you are uh, you know entering into pregnancy or you know you are entering into a transplant when your immune system is suppressed or when uh, you are entering into menopause right. so all these conditions actually predispose you to uh, you know your immune system uh, the regulation is happening because of hormones and that regulation is taken off okay okay that's very interesting you are also living uh, with a patient who is an autoimmune patient uh, to listeners who don't know dr taruna maidan is married to dr sanjeev gupta again uh, a very very learned uh, professional and dr sanjeev gupta suffers from psoriasis for the last 18 years is that right yes yes so uh, how, yes as an immunologist what was your first response when he was diagnosed and why do you think he was diagnosed 
you know rachna when you are studying things for profession it mm-hmm. means different and when you actually become the patient or you are you know part of the suffering family it it means altogether different so right. it was kind of a knee jerk reaction for us although we initially we actually thought you know because he was allergic to antibiotics it would be a simply an another allergic reaction which will die down the way earlier episodes have okay. but this one just continued and this was you know a result of uh his being treated on antihypertensive drugs and a panic attack and after that once he was you know uh, thought of that you know he's uh, overcome that panic syndrome and now he's no more having hypertension we kind of tapered that drug down okay and it resulted in psoriasis okay okay is my analysis i don't know no. how scientific it is to analyze things uh, just on one case basis but that's what no but but what you're saying corroborates with what uh, at least the patients that come to me and my own background with autoimmune conditions uh there is always a trigger like you said panic attacks i'm sure there was an incident in his life that triggered the panic attacks yeah yeah rachna you are very right at that moment his mother was suffering from a serious heart ailment and that triggered so so this is what i have seen in uh, most patients who come to me that apart from a lower immunity and uh, an emotional sensitivity there is always almost always an emotional trigger and uh, you know one of those patients who has overcome this uh, is now in our studio uh, palak bhalla ahuja who is also a holistic health coach now and she is giving back after getting cured in healing other patients thank you palak hi rashna how are you doing i am doing good i can see you are not drinking your green tea yeah it's too hot <laughs> that's the reason <laughs> hi palak nice to meet you hi doctor how are you doing i'm good so palak is an extremely bubbly part of our lives uh, and a large part of how she overcame her psoriatic arthritis is because of her own attitude so why don't you take us through your uh, journey palak so rashna i lost my mom in 2013 okay. and um, my sister got married in 2014 i still remember the next day of her marriage i had psoriasis on my hands the doctors were actually actually clueless what exactly what it was but uh, within a year they could figure out it is psoriasis so in 2015 i was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis in october i started with methotrexate okay to people who don't know what methotrexate is it is a chemotherapy drug which is used as an immune immunosuppressant for autoimmune conditions and has extremely toxic reactions with the human body causing very often multiple organ failure yes pal with methotrexate i was i think uh, in a very very bad condition i was in, on the bed for 2 months november and december were very very bad and the pains were extremely bad because i was i used to be taking three painkillers with a sleeping pill but still i couldn't sleep mm. And then in December, and I still remember I met you. Yes, I remember my angel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> who actually changed my life? Like that's a reality, because I started with your um, course of holistic healing in February. Yes. And I started taking that path, where I decided that you know maybe this is the right way to go. In March, I decided I will not take the medicine. Yes I remember it was a stormy time and I think listeners should know what happened in your family scenario so please tell us So my parents who who are doctors my dad is a doctor very well known doctor in Delhi he consulted with the best doctors and they all said that if she stops the medicine I will be on bed for all my life So it was a very hard decision for me to take whether I shall stop the medicine or no Yes and one night i got up and i told my dad and my husband i said i am not taking the medicine anymore the extreme that will happen is that i'll come back to the medicine but at least i know i'm taking the right path and if in, in a couple of years or couple of months it doesn't work i might just take the medicine back right so so tell me something palak i know i was after you to get off methotrexate because i had gone and thrown mine away when you know 13 years ago uh but there must have been something inside you some side effects some reactions that made you so convinced that you will not take this drug what were they 
So I was, I think, continuously vomiting. I was so weak. I was on literally on bed for about two months. I had two small kids. I had to take care of them. Plus, uh, you know, I think there was like, I think the medicine was just making me sick all the time. More than the disease, I think the medicine was hampering my body more. Right, right. And that decision was like taken solely because I was confident. I had the confidence in you. I feel. I had pure confidence. So there that, was a belief. Yes. That everything is going to be fine. Absolutely. There was some kind Which of was a huge responsibility yes. for me. But anyway, yeah, no, I, I'm, I had I'm that glad belief that, that yes, you will make shown. me okay. There is a reason that God has sent you to me, and that there's a reason that you know I have to stop the medicine. I have to go by the right track. Yeah, it's like what I say. You know, we talk about it often. That when I went through my rheumatoid arthritis, I, I used to wonder why me? Why am I getting this? extreme Absolutely. pain and now when we look back we know the why is you know we we cannot reach more people to help them understand and make them aware till the time we ourselves go through some kind of pain and you're also turning it all uh, out into positivity and channelizing your posit- positivity today to heal other people absolutely but you know coming back to methotrexate dr taruna dr sanjeev is also on methotrexate his reactions from what i understand are not so extreme so why the difference rachna uh, as uh, i understand from palak's case that you know she started on methotrexate and then she started for your therapy right but for us and for sanjeev fortunately it happened the other way round sanjeev because of his psoriasis had started developing arthritis and we knew one of our friend told us about you that you know you have a cure for arthritis and we were like clueless how on this earth someone can claim a cure for arthritis and that's how we contacted you and we saw such good results in sanjeev's health that we were almost sure that he may not need any medicine anymore but uh, somehow uh, you know because of uh, his own indulgence he went into an exacerbation and it was difficult for us to but he was on the nutrient support on the nutritional supplements that you had asked him and on the diet which was uh, reduced in allergens to quite a bit and that helped him restore his gut that helped him restore his immune system and that helped him fight the adverse effects of methotrexate right right i guess his gut was stronger his liver and kidneys were protected because of the nutritional program that he he was on and uh, a large part of the reason from what i remember he had to go on methotrexate was because of his uh, work commitments and the long hours and one of the things that people need to understand in autoimmune conditions is the concept of limited energy you know something that even for someone like palak you know you, you want to share it uh, uh, with the listeners it it took you a year to understand the concept of limited energy absolutely so i think uh, it took me a long time to actually understand the concept of holistic healing because i thought you know just eating right is right. what the healing is all about right. but that was not true just eating right and having the supplements on time was not the right thing to do because i ended up in the hospital twice in 2017 having bad allergic attacks and the trigger points again were stress yeah so basically i was not man- managing my stress and that was the reason that again and again i had a leaky gut allergies again the condition was coming back so the whole healing process i think i understood by 2018 beginning <laughs> where i knew that you know this is what is right for me to eat this is how i need to manage my stress stress will keep coming right i just know how to ma- i just need to know how to manage it this is the emotional nutrition so you were doing the physical nutrition and you absolutely. were not doing the emotional nutrition absolutely and as I you were talking here yeah stress is uh, you know a very very important factor that affects immunity in fact it regulates immunity and down regulates it like anything and that's how stress is the biggest killer so we all know that you know it plays around a uh, havoc with your brain and your emotional uh, system and that's how your immune cells are you know not able to act whenever they are supposed to their regulation is completely uh, gone and they behave uh, as if they are on their own 
Absolutely. And that's how you get into an autoimmune disorder. So doctor, I'll tell you one thing that I've been an extremely emotional person all my life. So I guess, you know, emotional emo- sensitivity. Absolutely. So that emotional sensitivity, I have been able to manage it now since last one and a half year. Now is the time that I can manage it. I know, I understand that this is how much I can take and I need to be taking care of myself that's before I take care of anyone else. That's I just want to make a point here that our education system is failing at that point that we are never taught how to handle our stress emotional stress especially so whenever you have anchors in your life your parents uh, your siblings you know your teachers they are helping you to fight that stress but suddenly when you realize you know as in your case as in my husband's case the mother was ailing and that just shatters your world Yes, uh, yes very very true very well put yes and and we have seen you know of course stress causes depression anxiety but even in autoimmune conditions depression and anxiety is actually a side effect of the disease itself i remember i used to be suicidal you know 13 14 years ago when i had my condition and uh, i remember palak being anxiety prone you Definitely. talked about sanjeev being anxiety Definitely. prone yeah. So, so guys, if any of you listening out there have an autoimmune condition and you do feel anxiety and depression, please understand that it is not you; it is the disease talking. If you manage your stress levels well, your anxiety levels will come down. And on the other side of the break, we are going to discuss how to manage your stress, what not to have when you have an autoimmune condition, and how to manage it much better so that your dependency on toxic medications. from methotrexate not only reduces but vanishes just to give you an example of how toxic methotrexate can be many of you would have heard of the band eagles and uh, heard their wonderful songs uh, they had a band player called glen frey he had rheumatoid arthritis and he was on methotrexate for many years and at the age of 63 he passed away from multiple organ failure because of the side effects of this medication So if you are on methotrexate stay with us to understand how you can continue to either be on methotrexate and still protect your organs or get off it we'll see you after the break and talk about how to manage your autoimmune condition catch you Hey everybody, welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you are not following us on social media, please make sure you do. And you know, it's about time that you did. So I mean like we're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Go to whichever platform you prefer or all three of them and click and follow. Also, you should check out our Instagram feed. We have a lot of interesting stuff going on over there. Peeks inside what's going on in the studio, polls, all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely come out there. Want to thank our sponsors this week, Camly Intel and Storytel. We our sponsors make this stuff possible, and so please make sure that you shout out to them, let them know that you appreciate it. One more note before we get into talking about what went on in the network this week, and that was that I would appreciate deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate it if you guys could go to ivmpodcast.com/survey or go to the website and click on the survey heading and And what we're going to do is we're going to do another listener survey. We'd like to know a little bit more about you, who's listening to us, why you're listening to us, what you want out of us, all of that kind of stuff. So I mean like, you know, it would be really really helpful to us if we could get a little bit of more information from you guys about who you are and that would help us kind of go out and talk to advertisers, which is again, as I mentioned earlier, how we get this thing going. So this week we're premiering a new Hindi storytelling show. It's called Tapri Tales and it's hosted by Madhuri Advani. Madhuri narrates day-to-day stories and occurrences in women's lives across generations. This week she questions the tea-serving traditions in our house through the mother and daughter pair in her story called Chai Ki Cha. On Cyrus says Cyrus is joined by senior journalist and author Veer Sangvi. He talks to Cyrus about his new book Game Changers and discusses the prominent personalities that have impacted India. They also touch upon election results and what the future might hold. On Storytellers and Storytellers, Vineet is joined by journalist Bhanush Kapal and co-founder of Gully Gang Entertainment, Chaitanya Kataria. Together, they talk about the hype around hip hop in India and its cultural impact. On Filter Coffee, Karthik is joined by NBA commentator and author Akshay Manwani. In the episode, Akshay expresses his passion for classic Indian cinema, especially the works of Sahir Ludhianvi and Nasir Hussain, and discusses the evolution of the NBA in India. On Ganatantra, Dr. Ornish Shani joins Sadhu and Alok to discuss the first electoral rolls, the entrenchment of democracy in India, and why, despite trying times, we must take heart. On the Empowering series, Zarina is joined by Dr. Mitika Kanabar. They discuss the relationship between stress and addiction. On Postcards from Nowhere, Utsav talks about his six-month-long stay in Shanghai and how it changes outlook towards Chinese tourists. 
on Agla Station Adulthood, Ayushi and Ritasha test each other by asking 20 questions. And with that, let's get you on with your show. Hello and welcome back to our special episode on autoimmune conditions on my show, Rachna Restores, and you're with me, Rachna, the host of the show. For those of you who haven't been here for the earlier part, we have with us the celebrated immunologist and scientist, Dr. Taruna Madan, and the very beautiful and talented Palak Bhalla Ahuja, who is a holistic health coach and an ex psoriatic arthritis patient. We were discussing autoimmune conditions and how debilitating and unpredictable they are and the kind of chronic fatigue they cause and the mood swings that they cause. Dr. Taruna, we were talking in the break about the social stress that actually triggers the flare-ups. Right. Rachna, the disease starts with emotional stress as we talked about in our uh, before the break and the psoriasis is a skin disease and when it starts showing up on your scalp, on your face, on your hands, it becomes a social stigma. People think that you have something which is very infectious yeah. and people stop sitting near you, people uh, stop talking to you, people stop interacting with you and that social stress leads to your, you know, you stop going out and you stop uh, interacting with people and you are isolating yourself and adding on to the stress. Yeah, it must be very traumatic. I, I believe Sanjeev has these phases of, you know, having the scaling and uh, then getting okay because it's an unpredictable disease and uh, if you're an emotionally sensitive person, then you are going to react to stress and not respond to it. Many a times cancel our air tickets. Oh God, okay. Palak, you have faced uh, social and other anxiety as well. Have you faced this situation uh, with your psoriatic arthritis? Well, yes, Rajna. I um, I think I had the fear of getting out of the house okay. when I was in the bed because I had the fear that I won't have that kind of energy to speak to my friends, uh, to speak to people around me. And that would actually create some kind of a, you know, why is she behaving like this? I don't know. There was some kind of a, I think, closeness in my... So you felt they would judge you? Yes. I did feel that. Okay. Though I have a great set of friends, they were always there to support me. But I think there was a fear in my mind right. that it I is, will be judged. See, this disease affects people who are emotionally sensitive. So, you know, you you are hypersensitive emotionally as a person so you will also at a lot of times end up imagining what is not there and create it as a problem and which causes anxiety inside. Absolutely and depression also do, did come in. There were a lot of times I was depressed. I didn't want to get out. I didn't want to speak to anyone. I won't even like to speak to my dad, my sister, my husband. They're the closest to me. Yeah. But I just didn't feel like talking to them. How did you overcome it? So I guess uh, with the holistic healing with you, uh, the family support that I got was the biggest healer. My husband was there to support me. My dad and my sister were always there to listen me out. And my kids were a very, very good support system, I would say. Like, you know, I think because they're small, so I would just, you know, see them happy and I would just get happy. That itself made a lot of difference in my life, I would say. But how did you systematically, if somebody was to ask you, how did you systematically change your response to stress? What is What are the three, four tips that you would give them? Yes. So, uh, see, fatigue is one of the biggest factor that comes with this disease. Right. You are like, I think 80% you're all the time fatigued. Right. You are like tired even after doing two hours job. Right. Like you might just be in the kitchen and you'll be fatigued. You might just get out with the kids for one hour and you'll be fatigued. So, you know, you need to figure out that you need to rest it out. You have to rest out your body well. Right. And that, mind. And mind yes, for Yes, absolutely. Extent. The body and the mind. So, fatigue, taking care of the fatigue part was the biggest. So, uh, did you take frequent breaks or did you listen to your... The start listening to the signs of your body when it would not get fatigued but it was getting near that how did you identify that so initially yes I would get fatigued and I would like 
just blame it on my disease and i won't do anything about it okay but That's then, interesting yes yeah. but then yes i realized that the fatigue is the reason behind my disease coming back again and again i need to take control of it and that's the reason i started meditation yoga that is something really helped me out definitely i'll vouch for it uh, sanjeev has really uh, you know gained a lot of confidence because of pranayama and repeated pranayamas including in his office breaks yeah so so the benefits of uh, pranayama and meditation actually have been clinically proven in terms of repairing our telomeres you know. for uh, for listeners uh, just to help you understand telomeres are like shoelaces at the end of our dna and they get damaged by disease or aging and in autoimmune and cancer they do get damaged and they get shorter but uh, in various clinical studies uh, even a 3 week period of 25 minutes of meditation and pranayama has shown to repair the telomeres hence reducing fatigue anxiety increasing energy levels definitely yes yes so what let us now come back to everybody who's listening wants to know what are the four or five things that you did palak which made you reach here with clinically no psoriatic arthritis in terms of either your blood reports or your physical state your mental state and you not being on any medication at all so you're a, you're a medical marvel Yes, I am. Yes. So please share the five things or four things that people should do. You know, what should they eat? What should they not eat? Mhm. Um attitudinally, what should they do? What did you do? So, of course, I started eating right with the help of What is right? When I say eating right, there were no sour items that I had. Okay. There was no gluten that I took. Okay. I didn't eat any sugar. Mhm. Um instead of sugar I started taking jaggery or maybe honey okay. which I I would add in my tea or any kind of dessert that I would take. And um I would st- start taking uh, a lot of fiber in my uh system. A lot of uh, fiber I started eating. I started eating a lot of gluten-free stuff which really helped my system. I did not take any milk and milk items. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah, that handles your gut. Yeah. Yes, I yes. guess so. The one thing that I did notice uh, about uh, Palak whenever we've gone out on our girly lunches is that she she must have a salad with loads and loads of extra virgin olive oil. Absolutely. And the biggest thing that that combination does is that it creates natural probiotics inside the gut and repairs the gut. And we all know that autoimmune is gut related. You'll be Absolutely. surprised, Rashna. My kids. put extra virgin olive oil on their parathas they need that trust me <laughs> that's a new one that's a new one so so mothers listening in get your kids off ghee get them on to extra virgin olive oil for higher immunity yeah. right 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 great uh, rachna as you said uh, you know probiotics so i'll just add on the the way hormones control our immune system yes so microbiome does control our immune system so it is you know both the ways the immune system is controlling what kind of microbes you will have in your body and the microbiome will balance out the immune system so immune system when it is you know hyper inflamed that is being regulated by the gut so when you are taking antibiotics you can actually see that uh, your immune responses fact, are going down yes yes yeah. very true very true so the second point rachna was um, exercising okay i realized the need of exercising uh the importance of exercising i would say uh every day i make it sure that i exercise my joints so you do strength training or Abs- yoga yes i do yoga hmm. and i also make it sure that i am exercising my jo- uh, joints so that they are healthy and the third aspect was uh, of course meditation yes fourth aspect i do take short breaks when i say short breaks i get out of the city alone oh so the me time <laughs> the me time the best part of the is the most healing. important time right because that's the time i give to myself that's the time i know it's only me i uh, i might sound selfish but that's the time which i need for myself to understand how my body is doing You're not selfish. You're nurturing. Self-nurturing is an aspect of healing. Yes, I am self-nurturing according to myself. But a lot of people 
do think that you know oh she's getting out of the city without the kids without the husband what is wrong with her every 3 months she's out but yes this is actually self nurturing and that has really helped me a lot a wonderful so, tip tell me something uh, palak uh, it doesn't bother you now that what people are going to say not at all so earlier it used to bother you absolutely that what will my friends say yes. and uh, you thought they would judge you yes. but your attitude has completely changed over the last few years where you don't care yes as long as you are self nurturing and you are okay yourself so that you can give your best to your loved ones absolutely important thing uh, rachna is to take your fears head on and that's what sanjeev did whenever he used to submit his cv for his uh, new job assignments the first line of the cv used to mention i am a psoriasis patient but that doesn't affect my working wow oh, this good. is so beautiful take your fears head on very well put dr taruna that's why we love talking to you we love gaining knowledge from you always always Thank so you. so we in this episode we learned uh, autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis psoriatic arthritis psoriasis rheumatoid arthritis are incurable as per medical science there is only management available and even the management is not extremely effective in controlling the symptoms or the pain levels or the fatigue levels it's an unpredictable disease one day you will be healthy and the next day you will have a slump but we have cases who have overcome their autoimmune conditions like palak without medications palak quit her medication and followed the path of nutritional and holistic healing where she fixed her diet eliminated milk and milk products eliminated sour items started doing yoga strength training meditation pranayam and most importantly self nurturing as an activity and she literally watched herself become better and better on a daily basis but like how long has it been that your reports have been normal uh i think it's been 2 years now so so we can actually uh, you know defy the logic around uh, uh when a rheumatologist says and dismisses it as you're in remission you're actually defying that as well absolutely right that's that's really really wonderful Please stay on this path and keep inspiring others to stay on this path. Thank you, Rachna. For all of you, you are on Rachna Restores, our show on good health, and you you can send in your questions to us on autoimmune conditions or any other health issue that you may have on Instagram and Twitter at Rachna Restores or at IVM Podcasts, and we will take up your questions in our future episodes. Till then, stay healthy. Take deep breaths, keep sipping on your green tea and don't take stress. See you next week. If you found this podcast resonating with your life on autoimmune conditions, you can tweet or inbox me your questions on at Rachna Restores. You can ask questions of about your immune system to Dr. Taruna. Taruna underscore Madan, Twitter handle. and uh, you can get inspired and take tips from palak palak on insta at palak underscore b underscore hauja that was the wonderful dr taruna madan helping us understand autoimmune conditions and the bubbly full of life palak bhalla ahuja who crawled back up and switched on the lights in her life with her spirit So for all of you suffering from any autoimmune condition or the side effects of toxic medications like methotrexate write to us and we will help you overcome your condition reduce your pain levels increase your energy and get your antibodies down with just changing your lifestyle with me with palak and with thousands of patients i have treated across 24 country for autoimmune conditions we know that this is possible Inbox me on Instagram or tweet to me at Rachna Restores and get your life back, fulfill all your dreams and lead a healthy, energetic life. This is your host and autoimmune warrior Rachna Chachi on Heal and Hearty, signing off for another week to heal patients streaming in from across the world. While you be good, do good, eat lots and lots of vegetables. And if you like this podcast don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network 
You can listen to us on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media, IBM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram and Rasna Restores on Twitter and Instagram. See you next week. The modern world is obsessed with food and agriculture. Everywhere you look, new and exciting technologies are bringing food innovation to your street market, your grocery store, your doorstep and your plate. From our quest for the perfect food photos to our rediscovery of ancient grains. Quite simply, food has never been sexier. But guess what? The modern food system is broken. It's a major cause of climate change, antibiotic resistance and global poverty. So how did we get here and where are we going? Most importantly, how are we going to feed 10 billion people globally by the year 2050 through better, more sustainable means? I'm Varun Deshpande and I'm Ramya Ramurthy and we work for the Good Food Institute, a global non-profit accelerating the transformation to a more healthy, sustainable and just food system. The next food revolution is here. On Feeding 10 Billion, we're giving you the inside view. You can tune into us every Tuesday on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. 